somewhere in June of 99, Stan and I attended the uh, meeting, the International Cardiology meeting in Jerusalem. And Marty said, and a couple others said, and we decided, you know what, let's try to raise money. We didn't have any company, we had nothing, we just had this crazy idea on a few slides. And, uh, when, and it happened that we were in Israel, it was in June of 99, and by the end of June, Alain Cribier had to apply for the maintenance of his patent. So he asked guys, maybe, you know, we need money, so we need to raise money. So we decided, let's go into, so the, we, we came to Jerusalem, we met with two VCs, one VC just didn't understand what we're talking about. The other one did understood, just said, it will never work. And then one of the guys told us, there is one company in Israel, in Kisaria, engineering firm called Aran Research and Development. They just hired the guy from Metronic and they would like to get in medical device development. And they will be maybe interested in investing one more time. We didn't look for anybody to develop because we already had the guys. And in, by the way, in the, in the area here. And, but they said, you know, they might be interested in, um, in, in, uh, in, in investing. And in Aran Research and Development is the, is engineering firm of 85 engineers who are involved in anything and everything, mechanical, electronic, mm -hmm. agriculture, so very, very bright people. So we got together and, and uh, we, we, we drove and made presentation, came back to Jerusalem, it's like one and a half, two hour drive, and there was a message from the guys, and they said, you know what, we, we not just want to invest, but we'd like to develop. So, it changed a little bit. We, we kind of discussed with Stan, we came back, we made a payment, we paid for all our whatever maintenance, came back and talked with the guys, and on July 21st, three weeks later, of 99, we have founded Percutaneous Valve Technology, Inc., and, uh, and we had four founders, so equal founders, and it was, of course, Stan, myself, Marty Leon, and Alain Cribier. This is how we started. Mm. What What... What lessons, uh, going back to there, 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 what lessons would you give entrepreneurs in today's environment, because it's different today in med tech? What, what was the w one big takeaway lesson that you would give to your, your, your brother, your little brother right now on that part of the journey up until now? You know what, uh, I think it's still the same path. You still have to find the right people. First of all, I, I'm not gonna tell you how to develop the, uh, there's uh, books written, everything is there. Yeah. You have to you have to partner with the right people. It's, it's, it's extremely important. And not to jump right away to VC as you can just get, get money from the family, friends, and everything else. But the main thing is you have to certain believe in something that you'll be able to do. You have to fall in love with this one and strongly believe through your experience that you will make this huge gap. Uh, what eventually happened and what's happening today, we have never, ever, ever anticipated at any point at the time at the beginning of what we were. So you, you have to understand, this is, and I will try to explain it a little bit later. But that's, that's, that's what happened. And to a certain extent, I think, without any doubt, luck plays a huge role in many ways and successes. I don't know what would happen if we wouldn't go there, we wouldn't be there, we're not gonna get in touch with this, with this company. We, we will meet with Iran and they, they, they just hire us up, Bash, who is today <laughs> runs and he is the, you met him too, so he is runs all the, the adverse operations in, in Israel today and the great guy and the engineers that we have, but this is different, so we'll get to this point. That's what I think. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, to a certain extent. I think it's it's, it's idea. The right people mm -hmm. believe, and uh, I think the luck definitely play. But the most important, of course, will be the people. So, and that's how we. So on twenty first of twenty <laughs> first of uh, July of ninety nine, we kind of established yeah. Inc. Yeah. in Delaware. And, uh, do, you, do you have a question? Quick question. So, yes. you're an electrical engineer. Yes. I always found that fascinating because when you think of PVT, it's a purely mechanical system. Sure. And I believe you were using lasers to learn how to manufacture stents. Not to use how to manufacture it. We build it here in Miami Lakes, by the way. <laughs> the first one. So, <laughs> literally right here. Right, we build here. So, as an electrical engineer, when you're getting involved in a purely mechanical system, when you first started that and working with Roe, 
how did that play out? Like, what skills, expertise from an electrical engineer could be leveraged into such a mechanical system? A uh, few, few words about me and my upbringing. I tell you that we, we came to this beautiful country of ours today, 41 years ago, from Riga, Latvia. So it was, uh, at that time, it was still uh, Soviet Union uh, from Riga. And um, when you and I graduated with whatever master degree from Riga Polytechnic Institute, and um, yes, it was I was electrical engineer. But the background that you used to get in the old system, and I don't know if it changed at all, is the engineering. Mm. Which as there is a little bit more emphasis that was given to electrical at that time than it's mechanical, but it didn't matter. So it really didn't matter for us. So we were It's the discipline apply. of thought, right? It's yeah, absolutely. That's that's what you that's what you teach. That's what you teach you in in, in, in school and in in, in in institute universities that you you'll be able to comprehend a bunch of stuff. So and when I came this is definitely was a when I was in Johnson Jones ultrasound, so this is one thing, and I was running, uh, developing one of the first uh, Doppler systems that sh that you hear. That was in mm -hmm. 1980s for the radiology and the cardiology stuff, and um, and then I worked for for another company which I was running engineering. It was for ophthalmology and J and J, and then I got to JJS, and this is interesting because we had hemopump, which was the only thing elec electrical had that anything to do with electrical stuff. And and then, of course, I started working. And I, I was giving very interesting projects there, and one of them, how to make stents and all this stuff. I got into lasers and learned about it. And finally, we built the very first one. It's just, it's amazing. And I, the other thing <laughs> we're talking about, I just, yeah, I have to tell you that I... And this is my biggest, I think, from engineering perspective, maybe uh, accomplishment is that, uh, is that I was involved in uh, integrating and making the very first nitinol stent, self-expanding stent, made from nitinol tubing. Ever, because I had the laser. I know the guy who was ma making laser who was able to cut the stents, and we're talking, uh, we're talking about. It's, it's 93, 94, 1993, 1994. And then I came to the guys. I met with guys. I don't know if you know NDC, if you've heard mm -hmm. this company, sure. of course, the Tom. And sure. the, the, I came to them when they just uh, spin off from left uh, Raycam, and it was like 10, 12 people they had. And I came to them, and I said, guys, we have nitinol tubing. And they said, yes, we have the best one, because they used to do dry glasses, the, yeah. uh, glasses yeah. and whatever. I said, yes, we have, we, have, uh, we have tubing, but we don't know how to cut it. And I introduced them, and we cut, and then the very, very, very first, because at that time, there was a nitinol stent, but it was made from wires. Right. They used to weld wires from NGOMA that was in Germany, mm -hmm. or uh, a wall stent, which is completely different nitinol. But it was the very, very, very first. And today, everything you hear about self-expanding, when everything there, it's, that's what it started. And it's happened in March of summer of 93. So. I, I, love, anyway. I love your recall on memory. You, you, mm -hmm. You've built so many great engineering teams, and they've always been teams that have made a big difference on product, right? Very little, kind of, right. Very little iterative work. What, is, when, what would you tell an engineer when she or he sits across from you? What's the number one thing you're looking for when you say, okay, you're going to be on my team? That's a good question. That's a good question again. So we just, uh, first of all, we relied on, on our people. They, let me go back and I'll tell you the story about the PVT engineer because this is this is extremely extremely important stuff. When we signed this agreement, uh, as I told you, um, uh, we founded PVT in 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 in, in, uh, in, uh, in July of '99, and then we talked with these people, and they said we'd like to develop as long so, as well. And uh, they went and they searched, and then finally by by the end of the year. We sign agreement, three-page agreement, that they will start working on starting January 2000, okay? And, uh, and uh, we didn't have any money there. We said, when we'll get it, so we'll, you'll be paid. If not, so sorry, so whatever. So. <laughs> but anyway, the engineers that we had there, we, because we had an agreement with this big R&D research development firm, so they allocated a couple guys, they allocated a couple guys, and that's, that's uh, and they start working on this. And there is a famous picture of this. The guys when I made presentation, by the way, try to compare it to to um, to Microsoft picture. Remember the famous pictures that they have? To, Will you invest in these guys? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, so anyway, we had two, two, two very bright guys, you know, um, um, 
Benjamin and Netanyahu. And we had the offices, very small offices, of course, and they were sitting across from each other. One guy was working mostly on the on the mechanical into uh, on the valve on the stand to hold you know on the frame for the for the valve. Another one was on material valve. And by the way, the other thing, of course, we if we get to this point, I'll tell you, we didn't have any nobody had any experience in valves, zero. We didn't know anything about valve. We just kind of comprehend that you know it's open and closed and whatever. So when we start working, by the way, we start working on polymeric valve because we didn't know about about tissue. We didn't know anything about it. So, and they were sitting across each other. Well, this is very interesting kind of, I will give it to you. And uh, they were sitting, in, and, and during the day, as Asaf used to tell, and he, he will tell time and they will entertain, they will come up with ideas on almost hourly basis. How to move, and at the very beginning, because they were thinking loud and they talk and this guy is doing fine and element analysis of this thing and this guy is coming up with this and that, whatever. And they will talk and will talk. I will never forget after we signed an agreement and and uh, and we used to come there on quarterly basis then and I to review to do to, to, to review. And I will never forget when the first time we came, it was uh, um, in, in in 2000. We went for the first design review and they come up with so many different ideas. We were overwhelmed. Nice, interesting ideas. So what we ask them to do, when we will come next time in three months, you internally, you, we, we, we very much rely on them, you internally decide and you present to us two ideas. And before we leave, we choose this one versus this one. I think luckily, over the next several quarters, <laughs> we, we were able to go through the in the right direction, and that, we that's the luck piece. And then the right, right, right that's you know. the luck piece. And of course, the timing and everything we, sure. we can get into it, but you know, sure. it's just. Uh, you you told a story over dinner about yeah. um, being in uh, Stan Rose. This was this was born out of Stan Rose's back bedroom. Oh yeah, it's spare bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah spare bedroom. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and you were Stan didn't have a garage. And then you were, and yeah. then you were writing the checks out of the check, but you kept the ledger. Oh yeah, I did everything. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, this is uh, this is the, just the story about PVT. We'll, yeah. It's just uh, the way we're, uh, you know, the whole PVT. Uh, if I'll tell you, and I'll definitely tell you how much money we spent, and how long it took us to get where we where we, we got in. But uh, uh, even when we established, we we started with Stan in the summer. Actually, we raised the uh, angels' money by the summer 2000. Then we completely. And we, we, we left and we start working from Stan's, uh, from Stan's um, as, as spare bedroom. Uh, and uh, we moved only to the office where I just vacated few, a <laughs> few, uh, few months ago. Uh, and uh, we moved there on March, on March 1st, 91, but, um, uh, 2000, 2000, I'm sorry, 2001. But this is the, the summer of 2000 we start working. And of course, when these guys, by the way, this is interesting, I will get to the point of the way we, we raise money. And we work from, I started writing checks already when I was, when we had money, <laughs> when I was in the office from March. But uh, while uh, we, work, we, we work with Stan uh, from his office, of course, we start negotiating. We start, we, we raise money, by the way, just very, very quickly. By summer, by summer of 2000, we raise money from angels and uh, friends. Whatever who is who in the in the industry who <laughs> believed in us, I don't know. I think one good stuff, and that's I don't want to brag about it, but talk to any intervention cardiologists in the last 20 years since in Europe. Stan and I had a very good reputation among them. Somehow they believed in us, and I think Stan was, by the way, one of the guy who who was participating in Benestan's trial to improve the current stance. He was working with Patrick Sarises and all this stuff, and they make it so he was very much involved in many things in, in the court. And, in, and I was involved, and it was interesting, one of the projects that, that he gave it to me, it was we tried to validate Antonia Columba technique to use ultrasound, I was in order to place the, to place the stance. And it's because of my other background, I got involved in the, in the study called music. So I, I had some, and that's what I learned everything about clinical because I didn't have clinical experience prior to it. 
But the bottom line, what I would like to say when we're talking about stance department, which is very, very important. So we raised $500,000 during the summer from Angels. We put the money, of course, Stan and myself and, and Marty and, and, and the other guys. And then we decided, so this is fine. Guys start working and making some prototype and then whatever. And we decided we need to raise real money. And here we start traveling, Stan and I going to not as much in the office and the beautiful center of whatever in, the, in Menlo Park, everybody knows. And, and we go there and we try to present. And, you know, we already had the first case. The, um, the first uh, animal case was very interesting. And it was we were able to show and that we placed some polymeric valve because we didn't know anything about other stuff and try to raise money and uh, the guy said guys we'll get back to you it's very interesting and then it will come we need to consult with the physicians so before we make a decision and who physicians were who they consult about some guys would like to develop percutaneous heart valve and place it on the heart and who are the experts and it's cardiac surgeons and everybody went to cardiac surgeon the top ones and they will say the same thing Never ever, no, no. There's a list, uh, you know. I don't want to go through. So that's that's why we got, uh, got a bunch of a bunch of rejections. But one thing I would like to mention: one of the rejections that we've got, and we've got later that one of the biggest mistake in his life. It's I don't know if you've heard the name Tom Fogarty. Sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we presented to Tom and his three, you know, three arch company there, we presented everything fine, and then and they decided, you know, uh, no. And he publicly admitted this one thing that he did not believe and said no, together is everywhere this period. Because he was, by the way, he was on the board, we can get to this when we get to Edwards, if you're interested. He was, uh, uh, he was the top advisory for advisory boards for Edwards Life Sciences, for surgical, of course, uh, heart valve. And he admitted later that this is a, one of the mistakes he made. So I would like to go back to the time we mentioned when we work with Stan at his apartment. This is the time when we decided to raise money, of course. It's not very difficult, but we still continue where What we ask our guys, and I would like to spend a couple of minutes, if uh, it's very interesting, about, about the Anderson IP. Because we, we ask guys, and we ask ourselves, and the Benjamin Nathaniel guys, can you work around? Because he, that's there are two ways. Of course, you can obtain the IP, it's, mm -hmm. or you can do something around wherever and try to bypass. And at one point, they came to us and said, Stan, you better get it. Get the IP. Get the IP. Yeah. And, uh, Did Hardport have it at that time? That's Hardport. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you the story yeah. about this one because it's very interesting and about the people who are behind Hardport. And, uh, uh, so what happened to uh, just a little bit story about so they said you have to get it now about Anderson AP um, Anderson is the Danish uh, uh, interventional cardiologist who had an idea he was one of the first who kind of published did some work and tried to do some that in his IP was about placing the valve in vasculature there was nothing across the cuff row, of course the native valve he he was using the, like half nagel position and uh, he built on his own and did some experiment and he published and there was publication and he look, was looking for everybody as we did before us. Nobody said, come on, no interest, nothing, nothing. Finally, there was one group of people at Stanford Surgical Associates. SST, yeah. That's yeah, Hartport before. Right, right, right. And they decided, and there was uh, Stevens, and, um, and there was that, uh, yeah. Casey? John, and no, 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 Casey was later, okay. he was at Harvard. And these two guys, these two surgeons, decided, let's develop percutaneous heart valve. And they acquired this technology. And they acquired technology from whatever they, they pay, they acquired this technology, and start developing what? Not the percutaneous heart valve. But they decided, because they are surgeon and they know exactly what's happening there, they wanted to remove, to cut off the native valve. Let's remove the native valve, and then we're going to place the valve. So they spent some time and developed all the instruments for minimal invasive surgery. And there was Stevens' patent, of course, very famous one, how to remove this stuff. 
and then they change from Stanford Surgical Associates to Hartford. Yeah. And they become so big and they grew with minimal invasive surgery. They were Do you them. remember that fight between cardiothoracic, you I think were too young at the Today. time, cardiothoracic systems and SST. There was a battle royale going on between those two on, on pump, off pump. In that's right, to the that's technology, right, right. right. But anyway, the bottom yeah. line, they yeah. developed this and they didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So we came and here is the uh, uh, case it is. And that's we, we came, we just started negotiating. We started in September of 2000. We end up in December. We had about 12, 14 revisions. The interesting point, and it's interesting, when we came to them, they said it's very simple, five, five, and five. So <laughs> 5%. five million dollars, five million royalty, 5% of the company. And uh, we didn't have any money at that time anyway. So, But it's not the point of five, it's one, not going to work. And Stan and I, but mostly uh, Stan, uh, because he had the patience. If uh, <laughs> he worked with me, it would be very tough. We went through so many iterations. I would, I, 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 you cannot imagine. And finally, we agreed. We agreed to three million dollars, no royalties, and two and a half or three percent of equity before at the, at the time of this. It's a nice and I have to. It's very nice, but I have to tell you, right, you can imagine what it's, uh, what, what it's today. Worth, right? <laughs> we'll get to this point. But what was very interesting, when we talked to Casey Tenzi, even at that time, he said a lot of companies came to us. A lot of companies would like to have this AP, including Edwards and others, and there's a bunch of other guys who would like to do this. What we wanted to do, and this is his words, we want to give it to the company who really will develop it that we believe they're not going to take it and just keep it and then maybe they will do And I think Stan and I were able to convince them. Of course, Marty was behind, sure. uh, of course, wherever. Marty, well, sure. he's not right at all, but it's somehow we were able to convince and they believed in us. And uh, you can imagine what happened after the success that we had and Edwards and when we got all the approval and you go to ACC or you go to TCT, and here is the uh, John Stevens is coming, hugging us, guys. I'm so proud, Casey. I'm so glad, and I, you guys, you did. And you know, it was so sincere. You never see this thing, and you know, Stan and I, we always, we very often we talk about it. You know, how important these things are, because usually people kind of, you know, when something bad is happening in the family, I'm very sorry. Mm -hmm. But they were so happy about our success, mm -hmm. the guys who sold us. This is, I, I always pay a lot of tribute to, <coughs> to Stevens or whatever. And you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, the number of people I chat with who sit in that seat who are in the device industry, it always comes back to the patient. And their happiness is not economic. Their happiness is that you took the tech and brought it to the market. Sure. That's super powerful. Right. And, and we have to remember that in the device industry. You've been in it 40 plus years. I've been in it 30. You coming up on a decade. It's really always about the patient, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can imagine. All the patients, even the first one, even the first Eugene. So let me jump to the first pa patient, and it's, it's very interesting. So, uh, and then you talk about the check writing, right? So, uh, so the company, the PVT, we started, right? So we started, as I told you, we, we moved to the office in 2001. In Fort Lee, it was, a, uh, and it was always two of us. It was Stan and me. We never had any assistant, any support. All the all the stuff was divided between Stan and me. He did all the, you know, all the corporate stuff. He did all the clinical and uh, you know, uh, the stuff. Of course, uh, all the development. Uh, development we participated both of us. I did all the finance. I wrote the check. I wrote everything what we used to buy over the years. I will provide check to 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 later on to our group and. Uh, to, to our subsidiary in Israel, but I did everything. We never had anybody. We, later on, we got just uh, the financial uh, lady who used to come for two hours a week, and uh, we put a small booth, and, and, and you know, so uh, and, and she used to uh, she used to work at there. But that's that's how we did. So we we did everything between us. That's why, and the same way we run the whole the whole business. And uh, I don't know at what time you would like to tell me how much time or money we spent to develop what we did, but we'll get maybe to this later. So so now we, uh, at December of 2000, when we got the IP, right, where we uh, negotiated the IP, we had the guys who invest money. And the guys who invested money were two firms. 
Of course, Yuval was behind uh, the medic adventure. Yuval Benor. Yuval yeah. Benor. Yeah. And uh, Oxford Bioscience from Boston. Jeff, was it Jeff? Jeff was there, yeah. right. So yeah. these two guys who put five and a half million dollars in the company, and as soon as I got it, the next day I sent two million dollars to to Hartford. So it was, uh, it took a long, long time. <laughs> it took me and said, my God, two million dollars, and it was right away day after Christmas, and I was in a small bank that we just got the money, you know, and I, it took three hours because they had some <laughs> some signature from VP in Boston to you sent sign two million dollars to yeah. Hartford. So anyway, so that's that's how a financially started and officially, officially PVT kind of start operation. Stan and I become a part of PVT as of January first, two thousand one. So this is our official start. So and and then uh, then uh, we start working. We the guys start developing. We still part. The thing when we signed the agreement, this three page agreement, there was certain thing. And there was a st stipulation that eventually, if we build, we would we will be able to carve few people, and that's what exactly happened one and a half year later when we formed PVT Limited, fully owned subsidiary of of PVT, and then we kind of were independent, and they were in our payroll and all that, all this stuff. But but uh, and this was an interesting thing, I guess, if you're talking about the technology. Uh, uh, as I m indicated to you, we started with a polymeric valve because we didn't know anything about the tissue, and you know, we thought maybe it's easier to do. We had a very nice polymeric engineer. We did it, and and there was at one point we were at one meeting with Stan, and they said, "Guys, you have to go to tissue. So where to get tissue?" Stan and I went to Cincinnati. There was biosurgical some company. They gave us some pieces of tissue, we sent it to the guys and they play with this one. So the bottom line with this, 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 this made this, this conversion and we moved uh, to kind of to tissue. And then there was the time when we decided to, we signed an agreement with three F Therapeutics. I don't know if you were. Yep. Three F Therapeutics we signed because they had equine pericardium. They had equine pericardium and for us we always saw that we need something thinner and stronger. And that's how we signed, and they were our, uh, become our supplier, and um, and uh, that's where we at. And and in 2002, and February 13th, Stan, Marty, and I decided to go and see renew your money on Saturday. And Marty is renewing very very close. So on Saturday we want to go to her lab. Nobody is there, whatever. And we would like to repeat with our valve, not with our stent, which we developed, to reconfirm that, yes, you can go into cadaver, you can place it, and you can, you can, so there's enough strength that it's not gonna go, and not gonna fall into anything. So uh, we went there on Saturday, uh, took the train, came to Renew, and there is a famous picture everywhere it's showing. On, um, when we, uh, and, and the most interesting thing, Renu gave me the heart. She never believed that it could be done. Absolutely, we came there, guys. It's not a waste of time, but at least I confirmed to you exactly what I used to tell you. You will never be able to open uh, the native valve, cal uh, calcified native valve with this stuff. And we came there and we put the stands. We didn't need to valve, we need just to put stand, uh, the frame. And they put this, the frame, we explain. And no, she told me, Stan, can you push it with your finger? She gave me the cadaver. And I tried to push through the ball. I couldn't. Right. It's calcified. It's calcified. Right. I just cannot. It's like a rock. It, it's rock. It's just, right. you, you can't imagine if you ever see that. <laughs> she gave it to me one because I said, guys, we're wasting time. So the bottom line, we pull through, we, we load this, we put the, uh, got the balloon, we creamed the, the, our, our uh, 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 um, we creamed our, our frame, we put it in, expand it. Just beautiful circular stuff standing there. And there's a famous picture. Renu is sitting, holding the cadaver. I'm pulling this one with, you know, with the dynamometer, so I would like to see how much it will hold. Uh, Marty is standing and watching, and Stan is taking pictures, so he, <laughs> you can see him. This is the famous, so we brought, of course, all the, the so it, 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 it would stand without any. Why I'm saying the date, and I remember, <laughs> because it was, by the way, on the, on, um, and we remember this date. It was on Saturday. On Sunday, we came back. So the same day we came home, on Sunday, we got called from Alain Cremier. And he said, I have a patient. 
the guy's dying. Yeah. And there's no no way he has fem fem bypass. He, that, you know, nothing is there. So maybe maybe there's opportunity. Maybe opportunity. Cardiogenic shock and everything else. So and he and there was a lot of correspondence between him and Marty and Stan. So they they correspond everything to get all legal kind of do all the documentation right. He allies doing everything on Monday in in France with their regulatory guys here. That's what we would like to 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 place this stuff. And the finalist then we called to Asaf, Asaf, guys, get ready. Fly to, on, on Monday to, to, to Paris, to Rouen, and uh, on Tuesday, February 16, the guy by name Eugene, who was in cardiogenic shock, who was almost dead for a few, uh, I don't know how many during, because it was, uh, was saved by us placing the valve mm -hmm. in his heart. And a few days later, uh, a few days later, I guess it's next day or the day after, um, uh, you get the, the famous picture was Allah standing with him and drinking champagne. <laughs> Three days later, he was interviewed by all the press in France and everything else. And the main announcement came on Friday of April something 20th, the day when Jacques Chirac has become a president. But before they made the announcements that he become a president, they show a lot of with, all the, <laughs> with Eugene and everything else there. So this thing changed the world. Yeah. Absolutely. So there was another another thing that I, I have on my slides I always show. It's still 2000. We still just, just we, did, we just raised our money. And we did our first, I told you, we did our first animal, animal experiments. September was there at TCT meeting. And uh, there was a presentation that Allah was giving about our, our first experiment. And uh, it was in the old, uh, old convention center in, in Washington, if you remember the block yep. across from the Hyatt. And we came to the room, so you can imagine how excited we were. I think about 12 people, maybe 14 people were there, you know, friends and family. <laughs> Nobody even close pay attention. And this is, this is uh, September of 2000. March of 2002, after the case, at ACC, I think it was in Atlanta, it was standing room only. It was just, just, just uh, 2002 and 2000, 2003. 2003 already start talking, and 2003 it was, all of a sudden people really realize mm -hmm. where we at and what's happening. How did, how did that, so, so how did Edwards come on the screen and tell us about what you can about that transaction? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and even right before that, because yeah. I think the listeners, especially startups raising money, would like to hear that journey. So right after that clinical success, you guys also, in addition to starting the trend of transcatheter heart delivery, you guys also brought on Medtronic and Boston Scientific yeah. as early strategics. And we see a lot more of that happening these days, but you guys almost started that trend if you guys actually factually didn't start oh, the trend. Yes, uh, yes. It, it, was, uh, it was a very good point, by the way. It was 2002 when we decided we need to raise uh, more money for the future clinicals and everything else there. At that time, nobody knew about numbers, by the way. Today, when you go, you know, you need hundreds of millions at that time. You know, who knows what it's going to take. It's just we pioneer a lot of other things, a bunch of things, including even clinical aspect and uh, what Edwards was doing over the years and to continue to do. Uh, so we decided to raise money. And, um, and uh, again, to a certain extent, luckily to us, we presented, uh, it was a summer of 2002. It was a couple months after. There was change in Medtronic. A change happened, I think, during the, I think it's 2002, if I'm not mistaken, when uh, uh, Bill so Hawkins become, became- Hawkins and Astrali, right? Right, Astrali. They, they, right, they, he became the, the president of, uh, of Medtronic. And, you know, Astrali, of course, international cardiologist, and he believed and he knew us, and, you know, whatever. And, uh, and, Bill always believed in percutaneous heart valve, even before he, we met, we knew him from other stuff, of course, before he came there. So we decided, Stan and I, let's go there and try to, to raise money. So we came there. there. All the guys were there, Bill and uh, Australia and the rest of other surgical guys and everything. We made presentation, wherever, and we left. And th the bottom line, uh, they, they, we, they, I think Bill and Steve were able to convince their board, the guys, Let's invest in this one. So uh, we see. Because I heard initially Medtronic was against it, right? And, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, Medtronic never was kind of against Medtronic. Yeah. We first time we came to them, yeah, because we never approached them 
with the with the other people. 2002, we just get the case. No, no, no. Mm. The, 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 it was it wasn't them. So when we came to them, we we had this good meeting. We we did some follow up, and uh, and uh, and they they agreed. Said you know what? And they led the round. They said we invest five million dollars, right? We look. At, we were looking at that time. We wanted to raise about 10, 12 for a few years, you know. But we decided to do it five, and so they put. Uh, uh, they said we're going to lead and we're going to do five, uh, some. And Steve Ostley will be on our board, ah. which is, was very interesting. So, so we're working on this stuff, and we at uh, uh, American Heart, uh, with American uh, Heart Stan and I, we met with Paul, Paul the Violet. And Boston and uh, and, and the Paul, we talked to Paul and he said, "Here's the situation. So you know, you, you know who we are, where we at, and uh, and uh, we just uh, we're raising money. Metronic is leading. Are you interested? Our guys will put. Our guys wanted. As soon as you raise ten, we're gonna give you whatever. We're gonna give you two or whatever. So we'll go after some some of the guys will already. So we already had enough. So but we talked to him and we came back. All of a sudden, he called. You know." come to, to Boston and uh, met with um, Pete. Uh, no, no, Pete, Pete, Pete. By the way, we Larry had a great Bell. relationship. Huh? Larry, uh, Larry, of course. Larry, Larry. Right. Yeah. And we came there uh, and uh, uh, came there. Uh, we, we met with uh, Larry and uh, who was the CEO at the time? I was, uh, um, uh, slipped my mind. So uh, whatever. We, we, but uh, the most important thing was Larry, of course, was Paul. And at that time, you know, they were investing everywhere. You know, they put five, five million, three million, the bottom line. The bottom line said, you know what, guys? We're going to put, we're not going to do any diligence. The dil diligence, of course, uh, Metronic did everything. All, all, all whatever, from A to Z. And we go together with him, but the only, and I said, we need about $2 million. I said, no, no, if you want us there, we, we, we have to pay five. If you take five, we'll, we'll go with you. And Paula Violet will be on your board. Guys, come on, the two, right. two guys from two right. major companies. Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 on our board, it was, oh my God, it's, and they, they, you know, and they help us. So the bottom line, so we, we closed, and uh, and all of a sudden, we got $14 million, you know, which we did, did, did not need, right? So we raised, I told you, five and a half. We raised half from our angels, and now we're getting $14 million. So how does Edwards... Does how does Edwards take that out from underneath everybody? So we'll, we'll go. Okay, we'll, we'll get there. We're still in 2002. If you want me to speed it up. 2004. No, 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 no. 2002. 2003, okay. everything started. Yeah. So. Yeah. so 2002, so that's where we go. We're moving. We're doing cases. We're moving alone. We have money. We start talking to FDA. We got incredible, uh, 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 you know, the, the advisory board meeting. We brought, uh, uh, by the way, one of the investors original was, uh, Mamet Oz was representing, by the way, surgeons. Uh, and Mamet, back on the patients. So you were doing these clinicals on really ill patients. Oh, my God. This, uh, right? Uh, we're, we're talking about people who are on deaths, but I think, absolutely. I, th yeah, I, think, I think somebody had the statement they had one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. I guess you're right. right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no. They're very, very sick. Absolutely. So, so yeah. was was, uh, uh, when you go there. So we, 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 we had cases. We had... Uh, a uh, few successes. We have one uh, great lady. She was dying, and she lived almost seven, eight years after. There was a, uh, there was a people who passed uh, away, didn't go, but they, they uh, and there are a few who had several years. We're talking PVT, like 12, 14 cases, I think, mm -hmm. before we got with Edwards. So, uh, 2002. So we continue to do. We do. We're talking to FDA. We're going there, discussing. We're discussing. Uh, uh, May 2003, incredible interest from other. Oh, and what happened in the summer of 2003? We never thought about uh, being uh, yet. We, we had Stan and I always put the list of potential. And by the way, regardless of anything, Edwards was always number one for us. Really? And I tell you why? Because we wanted this to succeed. Ah. We wanted to go through. We didn't want to sell and move on. Right. We wanted to make it happen. Mm. And nobody had better experience with Bob than. Of course. So, uh, so you, you paid it forward with what Hartport did for you, is you got the tech because they believed you'd carry it, and you did the same thing with, that's with Edwards. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I never thought about it, but that's exactly what. So that's what we, we didn't rush. We didn't plan. We had money. We had everything. We had what we need. We, we had already there. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the summer, we were called 
by Jonathan Fleming, who runs the, the uh, Boston, and he says, then, guys, can you come to me? And then it was summer of 2003. We're sitting in, in Boston, and he's telling us, guys, I just want to remind you that you are vintage of 96 or something, oh, no, of 99, I forgot whatever vintage was. I, I couldn't understand what vintage was at that time. And he called, the, later on I, I, I figure out vintage is the money that they raised, that they put in. They called that they raised in, in whatever it was at, at 99 or 96, and it's almost and five years is coming soon, and you, we need to, whatever, it's about time for you to think about, especially the success you have, standing room only, 2003. And I will never forget, we're talking there, and I, you know, and I said, you know, but the curve. You know, we're making such a progress. We'll continue to make a progress, so the price will go, will go up. And so, what do you think? What do you think you can get? <laughs> like I said, by the end of next year, without any hesitation, ten dollars. Sure. Wow. We just raised it two fifty or something. I said at that time, I said ten dollars. Okay, this is this is good. So whatever. And then, the bottom line, we left. We 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 will consider. We think, but for right now, he didn't push us. But he just gave us indication that they anticipate that eventually the company will be acquired and he will get the money and he will be able to pay for whatever vintage was 99 or whatever. So, and, uh, uh, and that's what happened. TCT 2003. Stan and Mike Mosalem, the CEO of uh, Edwards, they had a lunch together. And Stan talked to him and, you know, and we met before, but it's... And he did an indication, so, you know, that's where we are. And I think he gave Mike perspective that if there are anybody in the future, even we have, okay, I'll tell you that. Uh, I think Edward has to think and consider. Very nice, very brief. It was September, uh, mid of September. It was interesting, so if you look at the, our board and our investors, on our board were, as I told you, Metronic, with Steve, Boston, with Paul, and observation rights from Johnson & Johnson. Why? Because the two weeks after we acquired IP from Hartford, J&J bought Hartford on January 15th. As soon as I got approval. Right, yeah. in January, but we got it before. So the first check I wrote two million to Hartford. Two years later, I have to pay $1 million. That's why we raised the the money with Metronic, I have to pay $1 million that I paid already to J&J. So they had rights. So we had three companies sitting on our board, right? By the way, J&J never, I think, once, I, I, they will not come to it. So that's, that's the difference. So, and that's, 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 that, that, that's exactly uh, uh, what happened. So, and to make story again, to make as short as possible, in November, November 15, there was a meeting 2003, uh, 15 at O'Hara Airport um, between uh, between uh, three guys who flew from California. It was, of course, uh, Mike Musalem and John and, and Stu Foster, you know, the guys and from our guys. Oh, this is very important part for for any startup or anybody else, what, was, what we have created. Um, after our meeting in, in Boston in the summer of 2003, we decided what will happen if someone will come to us with offer to be acquired, to acquire us. We have Boston, we have Metronic, and we have Johnson Johnson on the board. How it will handle, how we can do this. So the idea was let's create a sub committee on our board which will entertain any offers that will come to PVT. We created this commission from subcommittee was of three people. The company was represented by Stan Rowe as the CEO. The second one was by VC was Jeff Barnes from Oxford Bioscience and the third one was independent was Mar Woodall who was the, the president of JGIS mm -hmm. at one point in January. Mm -hmm. This is the three guys who will get together. They will give you anything that will come in our direction. 
and make recommendation to the board. Why is that important? Because it's important because there is a certain conflict. How are you going to discuss who is Boston? Boston made an offer when uh, uh, Metronic is sitting here or Metronic or J&J. Because there is a conflict because maybe all three of them would like to acquire. So what's going to happen? How, it's, how to handle this? I think it was very, very interesting and very important. And this is exactly what happened in a, a, a acquiring PVT. Mm -hmm. So in November, whatever, 14, 2003, the meeting at the Hare Airport, the three top guys from Edwards came and three guys from our committee, Stan, Stan, uh, Mar Marv Woodle, and Jeff Barnes, they went there and they started negotiating, talking about potential, mm -hmm. potential acquisition merger or anything mm -hmm. else. So we got about five minutes left. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's okay. We got about five minutes left. So take me through what you think we should be sharing. In other words, how did Edwards, how did that dance come out? And then where is structural going? Well, uh, one of my major slides. Uh, one thing I would like, and we don't have to, uh, you remember I mentioned to you about J&J &J acquisition? Yeah. What was the worst in the history of medical device? Yeah, of course. The, the acquisition by, by uh, by, by Edwards is absolutely amazing. I still have to say, I will spend 30 seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 30 seconds on yeah. the acquisition from Edwards because yeah. it's extremely important, guys. Yes, One thing what we've done, but what we've done in the last 15 years, it was under Edwards, under incredible leadership of Mark, Mike Musalem, Larry Wood, and, mm -hmm. and our top uh, engineer guys. So uh, I, I don't want to miss this one. So uh, uh, November 14, is uh, we had a meeting. December 12, we signed the agreement. Wow. So it took like like it's four weeks. It's nothing there, right. and it, it was very interesting. We signed the agreement on December eighth. There was an email sent to all the board members, a recommendation to accept this 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 kind of this offer, and that's how. And of course, the way the way we reacted. So the boss, uh, Metronic, built telephonically, and we had regular scheduled board meeting in Fort Lee in, uh, in my office where we, where we office where we were, and Steve, uh, in, in, not Steve Osterley, but. Paula Violet flew in the morning from Boston. On the, on uh, after they discuss it, he said three hours they discuss it with Larry, uh, with Larry, Larry Best, how to respond, go or not to go. He came back. He flew in. He came to the office. He was at the meeting. He signed the paper and he left. He said congratulations, guys, great job, yeah, whatever. I hope one day we'll work together. Unfortunately, they acquired guidance and everything. Right, everything went back. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, because he would be the next CEO. Sure, sure. But anyway, so uh, uh, Edwards, and so that's it. So that's that's how in, in, in January 27th uh, that we were acquired by by uh, by Edwards. A very uh, extremely important part, guys. The integration between our one, other company was amazing. The most important part of our company is, of course, engineering and engineering. Our engineering. Who is the engineering of? Edwards was like you can imagine. They like brothers. They they just how come though? Why I don't know why. It's 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 that's, that's where that's, it goes it's sideways approach. most of the time. Most of the time that's that's where exactly. I but it was amazing. And the most interesting thing, by the way, the most I, I, I mentioned to you that we had zero experience in the valves, right? Yeah. Yeah. We know stands, uh, delivery, uh, you know the catheters, everything. What happened? Our group up today developing valves. And the group in in Edwards is developing delivery system and the rest of this stuff. Do you, you yeah. have a question? No, it's, I mean it's a fascinating story. Oh. But till to this day, though, the the actual prosthesis is being developed in Israel, and then the delivery systems are being developed in something. Uh, the development, right? Right. Development still goes, but, you know, mm -hmm. but that's mostly right. That's, that's is that what, what you mean by your group? Your right. All the sapiens, for example, all the sapiens. Right. It's all right. Mm -hmm. It's okay. all the, it's all developed there. So, so this, <coughs> the, this, the structural market is obviously it's share right. the share the stat with the audience that earlier before the show started you mentioned if I invested a dollar in Google and I invested a dollar in Edwards in two thousand and four. Right. Yeah, that's the, the the story was I was there. It was at the meeting, and I think Larry Pickleson from Paul Fargo said, "You know, guys, if you compare what what uh, how we grew, so when when uh, when they acquired uh, when Edwards acquired PVT, it was like about one point seven billion dollar company. The share was like eight dollars, and today it's two forty. So it's uh, you can see the math here, very simple, and it was like 30, 40, 30 times, I guess, right? Over thirty, and uh, I think at one point, of course, I don't know what Google is today, but when 
it was presented, it was much less than uh, uh, than uh, than the Edwards. But uh, the important stuff is just uh, Edwards's organization, as the as I always pay always pay tribute to Mike Musalman because Mike Musalman, when he decided this is this is our story from the startup, and this is Mike who is taking. He, he went to the board, the bottom, the bottom line. He went to his management team to ELT and said, guys. We need to acquire a PPT, right? Because they, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Who is for? No one. One guy was on the on on the fence, Steve Foster. Everybody, uh, you, we, still surgical company. Do you understand? This is surgical. And they talked to Fogarty, and Fogarty said no. Mike went to his board of directors and said, guys, I need to acquire a PPT because I believe in the future here. And they said, okay, so what... Uh, uh, what is your uh, ELT? What is your leadership saying? Are they supporting? No. Is uh, supporting you at uh, advisory board support? No. And he was able to convince his board, and he didn't have money at that time. They, they just they just started. They had to borrow everything, and now now our deal is mo it was mostly cash deal. It's uh, but but and he got it, and I will never forget. I always say I was when they say big party for me when I was leaving. I said the same thing. I will never forget when I saw Linda, his wife, Mike's wife. He said when he came from this board meeting back home, he said Linda, I just bet my house, whatever. He's still at the same house <laughs> in Laguna Beach. But anyway, the bottom line, integration, and that's that's very important. And I think between us between PVT and, uh, and Edwards created what created. Now, what else been created, you know? Besides kind of all, all the stuff around, the whole structure field, you know, we started this transcatheter approach. And by the way, I had a very interesting comment that when I was presenting it to ICI. We called the name of the company Percutaneous Valve Technologies. That's the idea we had. Send one, I, I wanted to kind of make a name, but Stan said, let's, let's call it Percutaneous Valve Technology. Why percutaneous all of a sudden become transcatheter? Because when we, when, when uh, Edwards acquired us, right, and the main, the main guys, the main guys' customers who are there are the surgeons, we had to create another approach to make a transepical approach for them as well. And then you cannot say this percutaneous. And then the terminology transcatheter came about. Because if you talk today, most of all the procedures are done. They are percutaneous. And it's in the mitral and tricuspid and the other stuff. So. You had a question. Here, here's my final question. Uh, with regards to the patient and then structural heart in general, you guys started off in aortic valves. Now we're seeing it being opened up. And you mentioned how sick the patients were initially that you started working on. Right. Over the past year or so, we've been seeing the application being expanded to moderate risk less risky patients. Right. I mean, so starting a company, starting transcatheter valves, and now having it be available to yeah. mass patients mm -hmm. as opposed to just these six ones. What are your thoughts on that expansion? It's, it's absolutely, as I indicated to you before, uh, when anybody will ask us, and did you believe in anything that will happen? Even for the high risk, we saw, you know, we saw there are three applications. People who refuse, people who cannot be operated. That's it, and so maybe some, but now everybody, we created, this is today, the standard of heart valve replacement. And the curve is already going, the surgery goes down. And, you know, and, and you know, it's 24 hours, people, uh, did we ever think that, uh, some people done a couple cases outpatient. I wouldn't go there, you don't need to. But there were a few cases done outpatient. There are so many uh, stories of the patient. Every time we had a meeting, uh, we have a meeting in Edwards, there's always a story of one of another patient. It, it, that we have a collection of them. If anybody is interested, if you go to edwards.com, you will find them. It's unbelievable stories and who are there and the people and, uh, and you know, all of a sudden after, you know, <laughs> Mick Jagger and Kissinger's and That's everybody right. else. You know, there is a <laughs> like, you know, it, That's and a they leave. Uh, you yeah, know, I will, I will never forget, uh, I, I can tell you a small anecdote about uh, Henry Kissinger. Maybe it was, uh, it was uh, when it was already public, Marty told us the story. When, uh, when he came and they decided to do the tower and they, they did the tower and, and he asked uh, uh, Marty, he said, just doctor, can you tell me, usually I write book every one, one and a half year, do I have a chance, uh, a chance to write another book? 
and Marty told him, you will, have to, you will write a few of them. And it happened about five, six years ago. And then once Marty invited him to come to TCT, like he loves all in And um, Doc, and uh, Henry Kissinger said, I, I'm very sorry, doctor, I'm, I'm going, I have a meeting uh, in China as the president, and on the way back I'm stopping by, by Putin, so I cannot be at TCT during this time. And he was about 94 years old. Wow. After he wow. had this stuff. Wow. Wow. That's the, the, there are so many stories. This is the big boys. Right, right. But the regular stories. Right. The, yeah. regular, the regular people, they Just come and they do it. 24 hours, you're out. And, uh, so you're, and in, the, you're in retirement now, right? Sort of, kind of? Uh, sort of. No, no, no. no. So I, I, I told you. Yeah. I told you. Yeah, I told yeah, you. Yeah. I decided, you know, it's time. They, there are certain changes you have in the company. Company becomes so big and so, yeah. so great and yeah. everything. Yeah. They would like to have more people there because, as you understand, I never moved to California. Right. I still work for 15 years from my office where we started PVT. I was commuting, of course, on a monthly basis for a few days and whatever. And they... And it's, ti uh, it's time, they did a little bit restructure, and I said, maybe it's time. Mm -hmm. They still said, stand if you can, and uh, please consult with us, and I consult them. With Are you staying busy? Staying busy, yeah, this is important. So this is the important part, and uh, I, you know, I don't have any plan to go and join the company, but, but I will definitely entertain potential positions, maybe on the boards or something, of interesting company, as always interesting people, I guess. Mm -hmm. This is, a, yeah. I would be able to enjoy it very much, because luckily in my, my career, um, it was amazing year 2019, as I, I indicated for yeah. you, so it's uh, 50 years since we got married, 40 years since we moved to the United States, 30 years since I, I joined JGIS with us then, 20 years since we founded PVT, and <laughs> 15 years since we were acquired. So it was a major, major decades, years, and uh, uh, was being created by my colleagues, and, uh, and the company is unbelievable, and uh, it's hundreds of thousand patients. Yeah. And you know, the, the important thing is not that we extend the life. Our procedure dramatically improves, improves the quality of life, which is, I think, Especially, we're talking about, we, we used to talk about elderly, elderly people, but today you go early, you know, we will see how early you can do it. Mm -hmm. But again, you put, you put valve, you can put valve in the valve in the future, but quality of life, there is no comparison to it. And as uh, um, uh, Mamet Oz told us at the very first PPT board, uh, advisory board meeting, he said, the important stuff, guys, that you will be able to deliver, uh, to, to, to develop is to which zip code the patient will come after the procedure. Because most of our people after surgery, and he's a surgeon, will come to nursing home and to special ah. facility. Mm -hmm. That's what he had in mind on the zip code. Are they coming home mm -hmm. or are they going to certain right, rehabilitation? Yeah. And they all come They're home. They're all coming home. They all fantastic. come home. Fantastic. Well, Stan, I cannot tell you what a treat this has been to be in oh. studio here and share the story. I mean, there's a lot of people who needed to hear this. Uh, thank you very much. An iconic yeah. story. Yeah, I yeah. So, I mean, it's it's probably the biggest shift in med tech, I think. In the last, you know, so I guess yeah. that's yeah. what well, people are saying in yeah. the last 10, 20 years. Yeah. It was really yeah. a, a huge, huge. And especially it's open. It's opened the door, and that's what people develop. You Correct. can imagine the number of companies. That's what the kind of I follow companies in the mitral and other spaces. Mitral, tricuspid, aortic, tri everything. You know, yeah. right, repair, replace, no, something in between. Who knows? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But, th but thanks for starting the industry. Okay, sure. Thank Great you having guys. you there. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's Our pleasure. pleasure. Take care.